G'day and welcome again to another Campfire panel discussion. And today I have with me, first of all, Anna Bratley, CEO of AJC Administration Business Solutions. G'day, Anna. Hi, Alan. How are you? And thank you for having me here today. Oh, you're welcome. And then we have Heather Joy Bassett, who is a personal and business coach, best-selling author and international speaker. G'day, Heather. G'day. <laughs> G'day. <laughs> Definitely Australian on that in that time. And Ian Westmoreland, who is the founder and director of Mentoring Men. How are you, Ian? Fantastic, Alan. Thanks for the invitation. No, it's great because two of you, this is the first uh, panel di uh, discussion that uh, both you, Ian and uh, Anna, have been on, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, so we'll have a bit of fun with that. And we <laughs> always talk about what subjects. Now, at the moment, with the coronavirus, there's a lot of pressure. We're talking a lot about emotions and other things. And we've got into some of the previous conversations fairly deeply. And today we thought, well, yeah, let's have a look at uh, how do we make the most of the opportunities that we currently have? How can we uh, best support others during these times in a lighthearted way? How can we have a little bit of fun in helping people? So if I may, Ian, can I ask you to uh, start us off with the conversation? Yeah, well, clearly COVID nineteen's had a major impact on the on the way most of us work. For some, it's been an incredibly difficult time. Uh, from a personal point of view, uh, it's been uh, the most productive, uh, filling time that I've I've had in my working life. Uh, it, I, yeah, wow. <laughs> um, because it, I can operate far more efficiently. It removes the travel time associated with it going uh, uh, to or from events. I was just saying before, I live out in the Hornsby area of Sydney. I had a, a meeting this week out at, uh, that was going to be out at Campbelltown. So that would turn that into over a half day meeting. Uh, and then it just turns out to be an hour Zoom meeting, far more productive. Uh, another meeting with Western Sydney University, again, the same sort of thing. So, so it, um, I work, a lot of the work I do is from home. So I can just get out of bed, work when I want to start working and finish what I want. Um, a negative is the fridge is just downstairs and uh, it's <laughs> easy to get access to the fridge. Uh, um, and the bar right behind you. <laughs> but but it, another, I guess another positive, we, we ran a, a men's forum uh, last night. Uh, we do virtually all of our stuff by Zoom and there's 70 and 80 year old guys <laughs> who we're talking through. These guys are picking up the use of technology and you, you, you give a man a fish, you give him a meal, you're teaching a fish and you fed him for life. So mm. they, we had a lot of fun. Like there's these guys skilled up and in the end they're, they're getting quite confident, muting, unmuting, turning video off and turning video on. So um, I'm not sure if this is positive or negative, but my wife's uh, uh, is now worked out all these home projects that we should do together. <laughs> So, um, so we've washed the windows, uh, tidied the garage, and this morning she says she wants to do some painting, so uh, not the artistic side. But, <laughs> uh, so, just personally, it's been a it's been a, a, a great time, um, and in be, in with that because we're still allowed to exercise. I'm a, a, a keen bike rider, so I'll take an hour and a half off every second day, just hop out on the bike. Uh, we live near beautiful Bob and Head. Uh, and I just go for a bike ride down there and that just clears my head. I can then, you know, work, work much later and that, uh, so for me, it's been, it's been great that, uh, I said, I know everyone else is not in the same boat. Yeah, you know, I can see that, uh, a lot of people have been loving the fact that they're on Zoom because they can find that mute key. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just find it. How do I find it? <laughs> As long as I don't get into trouble with that comment with some of the, uh, the husbands and wives on the, on the show. <laughs> oh, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah look, for me, um, it's been quite a challenge, especially with my staff. Um, the positive out of this is we're saving a lot of trees, so we don't print anymore. Um, so we're actually doing everything online with two screens. So the younger staff actually is quite interesting, are struggling with doing it this way whereas the older staff are really into it like especially me i've got like three screens going and i'm like this going back and forth but the younger ones are actually struggling with it which i found quite fascinating considering i thought they would be up to technology and um not being up you know without having to print the paperwork stuff so the only thing for me from a negative point is i don't get out of my chair 
because the bar's right here, mm. all I need to do is just find my glass and then pick it up. No, I'm only joking. I don't really. <laughs> um, I just find I don't. I work too long hours now. Mm. Not like you, Ian, where I you get out and you go on your bike ride. Yeah, I've got to find that part. But mm. um, apart from that, I enjoy zooming with everyone, especially family, because a lot of my family's from Perth, um, mm. and normally we we're on the phone. So now with the Zoom. I'm able to speak to them and have a good old chat with them while I'm still working. So I find that really good. Mm. Have a good laugh with the family. So. And how about you, Heather? Uh, yeah, I find it really interesting time and I'm very aware that uh, positivity is my second highest strength. And third, the, my third highest is futuristic and connected. So I can always find the positive and the possibilities and the connections because it's, who I'm designed as, it just it just is. And I'm aware not everyone not everyone has those same mm. strengths. They have other strengths that that don't take them into those places. So for me, just watching the changes, I walked with my daughter today and she was telling me about how there's ducks on the Thames and there's dolphins in some area there hasn't been. Mm. Um, and there are these all these amazing things with nature going on with uh, the stop and you know, the humans and nature as well. So there's lots of changes going on and even with family members listening to them. I heard someone say, oh, it's like being back in the 50s because they've got young children and instead of going out to do all these different things, um, been doing them at home and so my grandson was here and they'd made a kite. It was about 30 centimetres by five centimetres, a piece of paper with a piece of string on and he ran up and down the driveway just with that piece of string and that oblong rectangle bit of paper on the end of it. And I was like, again, so many people are coming back to the, to the simple things, mm. yeah. making things simple. And I think I find that a really joyous. Um, that actually just joyous. brought back memories. Mm. Yeah, we, that mm. brought back memories. We did the same thing when we were kids. Like it wasn't mm. technology. We were out in the driveway <laughs> playing cricket or um, running around in the front yard or out. I mean, obviously you can't go out in the roads here, but um, in the backyard playing kites, doing things, not sitting down watching TV all the time. And like you said, Heather, when you go out for a walk, or even when you're driving, the amount of families that are now out walking together mm. compared to six months ago, it's, it's truly amazing. I think it's a positive. I think hopefully mm. when we're all allowed to go back out properly, that they keep it up. Mm. I yeah. saw this cartoon that really epitomised that um, and it showed it like time lapse. 40 or 50 years ago, there's the picture of the mother at the front door grabbing the young guy thin guy by the ear, he's got a ball under his arm and you, and the discussion would have been, come in, the street lights are on, or you've, you've had enough play, come into the house. And I, that's what I remember growing up. Yeah. The, mm. the cartoon now was a, a chunkier young guy holding on to his gaming device. The mother's trying to drag him out <laughs> the, mm. for the front door. And th seriously, it's, it's had a huge impact. I mean, we, yeah. we, I think there's definitely a strong relationship between physical exercise of some sort and mental health. And, and I think that's, in my view, is one of the reasons why yep. we've seen a decline in, in that area. We, we need to get out and get uh, uh, fitter again, uh, just mm. more fun exercise. Yeah. Uh, but one of the things we did, you're talking about the family, we did a family Zoom meeting yesterday. So we've got uh, 10 grandkids and we had a, uh, we introduced a uh, minute to win it. So, from youngest to oldest, each of the grandkids had to put on some sort of show. So, so it was skipping or telling jokes or whatever. And uh, it went it went down a treat. Uh, <laughs> the only hassle, they all want to talk at the one time and that, that makes it uh, makes it more interesting. But it's just the, the only thing to me, the, the biggest negative is the physical touch. You just, mm. you, you can see, you can engage. It's just the, you, you want a, the hug or just, you know, mm. or the tickle in my case, you know, it's a, you just can't do, you can't yeah. do that. That's, that's the hard part. And we, we need that physical touch as well. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, it's been quite interesting. Um, one of the things that, well, as you know, some of the guys pulled a surprise birthday party on me and then, uh, <laughs> and I couldn't <laughs> believe it. Uh, Heather's going, I can't think of any jokes, but you did pretty well. <laughs> 
<laughs> and they had a party with me out because when they organized it of course they had to get together beforehand and a lot of them was the first time they met each other so scott who was running the the the, the, um, the zoom calls managed to make get them into uh i would call it dad jokes and uh, it's called of course heather said well i'm not a, a dad so i don't know any jokes but you know both her and uh, kylie did quite well on the one with the rest of the men and so with that we've now decided one of the things is we're, we're talking about serious stuff men are coming in here women are coming in talking about their issues things that have hurt them in the in the past and working through that we've got uh, education system, as pro programs as well running but now let's bring in a little bit of humor with this as we decide today let's make this a little bit more light-hearted than some of the more serious panels we've had and so there's going to be a a regular Facebook Live that Scott will be running that uh, will be fa uh, dad jokes and for everybody to be able to come in so there'll be a number of people on screen with the dad jokes they start preparing and because um, after that night Kylie's been sending me messages of different dad jokes she's been finding so she's getting ready for it and then it'll be a competition for everybody else in the campfire to be able to then come onto the Facebook Live put their um, jokes in and have those read out by the panelists, et cetera. And then in that, uh, we'll have a competition. So if you hear the dad joke, you can give it a, you know, a, a smiley face if you like it, or you can give it the, if you don't, and we'll do a count. Person who gets the most smiley faces will end up winning a prize of some form. Okay. Oh, that and so great. we'll have a lot of interaction with that. So yeah. instead of sitting at home and going, well, and I hate the term, uh, social uh, distance from everybody, because it's not it's physical distance and we are well from what you guys you know heather and all the others did for my birthday party that was 20 people on three different continents that is social connection that's not distancing at all so um we want to be able to get that people to realize that in this time it is social connection that we have and we can build on that we can have some fun with and laugh as well yes we can be serious when we need to be but let's also balance it out and have a lot of humor as well and I think that it was such a fun thing to be part of. Mm. Um, yes, I, it was just so good. Um, but one of the things like I'm seeing is a lot of families coming together in different ways that they mm. haven't been. So I said often people would have a phone call with one or a phone call with another, but then to have families from around the world taking the time mm. to get on the Zoom calls, mm. like, you want to have shares in Zoom right now, I tell you, because it's just, um, it is it is phenomenal to see. So even though people talk about that isolation, there are so many people coming together. I also have friends who feel very isolated because they live alone. Um, they're not, they now don't have a job. And a lot of them were in sporting clubs because I'm a world champion athlete. So I have a lot of athlete people that I've, been in the sporting world with and so for them it's like their whole world's been ripped apart from you know that physical connection physical mm. sport being on the on the on the pitch being interactive and then a lot of them work in gyms and things like that so that literally is all gone mm. and it's such a, such a shock to the system to and again there would be that physical constant physical touch in those places so yeah for people people like that then that's a, oh, a different world on a different level to what it is the change is for me yeah. oh, that's so true because i do um dancing ballroom dancing and latin dancing and i would do it three times a week and since obviously the shutdown we haven't been able to so if we do it online you know what nothing compares to being together you know, mm. and just having, I mean, we still have the jokes and I still laugh and we still carry on, but it's just not the same as being there and having that physical touch and laughing at the same time. So I get where they're coming from for sure. Absolutely. Mm. One of the fun things we introduced for mentoring men was a physical challenge to the men. And it started off, we put a, a crazy video together, which shows me exercising around the house and, and outside. So yeah, I'm carrying my wife around an obstacle course. She's in a wheelbarrow and I'm pushing. And, and I, 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 I can actually show you now if you like. But it, it had um, 5,000 Facebook views in the first uh, two days. Mm. And the competition, they get some mentor, uh, mentoring men merchandise and a, and a toilet roll. And of course, <laughs> <laughs> the, 
So, so there's now been other entries uh, put in. Uh, the, the music, the background music for mine, and maybe you, you people aren't old enough to remember Benny Hill, but it was the Benny Hill music. Mm. Uh, the, the, the latest entry, uh, the guy used Rocky. It was hilarious how he's doing push-ups and stuff like that. So I'm happy to share it. But if you, if you look at Mentoring Men, you'll see that you'll see them there. But that's just, just a fun activity. My goal, get men away from the TV, get them away mm. from the, the, the fridge with the food mm. or alcohol or whatever, and just get out and have some fun. Because I know there's a lot of stress. Uh, mm. yeah. Well, there's a great opportunity there for especially those that have got kids to do that with their children as well. You get that connection. Well, they were out doing other things all the time before and they weren't around their kids. Yeah. One of the biggest problems is that um, men are either not in the household itself or if they are, they're out doing the work and they're absent physically. Well, now they're present physically and now is a great opportunity to have those uh, competitions and games and that with your kids. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and using your imagination as well, because I think one of the, some of the bowlers, they set up bowling that goes you know, around the corridor, down the, the stairs. And you know, it's how, it's how ac accurate can you be on an obstacle course that's not dead straight? And they're filming all of this and having a, a ball with it. And so, you know, it's, it comes down to our imagination. Yeah. <laughs> that's how exactly much can right. we apply? And the, yeah, and the positive side of the imagination. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And we can cheat. Because what we can do it, we can get on and we can go and have a look at Ian's video, for instance, <laughs> a few ideas. And <laughs> well, well, pl please have a look. I guess what this has done is given it, there's a whole lot of time that people have now got available to them, mm. and whether it's just reduced travelling time or they're unfortunate enough to lost their job or whatever, mm. and it's how we use that time. Do we use it productively or unproductively? And if you use it unproductively, you start to feel like crap, and you just you feel like yeah. You know, I don't know about you, if I sit down and watch TV for three or four hours, I think what a waste of time that was. Mm. Or you can do um, I was on a Zoom call the other day and there was an easel behind. And I saw, oh, is that you? And it was the woman I was talking to, it was her husband. He's not an artist, but the stuff looked fantastic. So he's taken up painting. Mm. So it, it could be the book that hasn't been started or written. Mm. It could be something where I said washing the windows or doing the garage or whatever. <laughs> but it's, I guess it's just that motivation to do it. And, and just, to, you know, what, what, something about the journey of a long time. It starts with one step. Well, here, here we go. Do it. Yeah, I think a few other guys out there would be liking the comment you just made, but only part of it. You know, painting on an easel, fine, but washing the windows. Come on, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, did, <laughs> I, did, I did both. I've had these windows that needed painting when I moved into my home. And they're on the first floor, and it's just, you know, it just seemed, you know, I'd have to get a cherry picker and just like, ugh, too much, too much hard work. And the other day, I hired the cherry picker. So I was up in this cherry picker, and the, the greatest thing the guy said was, like, keep a cool head. That's all you got to do. Because there are times where the basket was swinging around, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm heading towards the bay windows. Like, and I'm like, stop, 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 which is the stop one? So it was so much, so much fun and it really made me stop and think, what are all the things that we keep putting off, that we keep putting off, that we keep putting off, that now it's like, well, there's plenty of time. Mm. And so for me, it was that cherry picker and I was up there for like six hours and then had a break. And by the time I finished, it took me about two days to recover, but it felt so good to be like painted of windows. Mind you, not because I'm going to stay here, because I'm selling the house. That's beside the point. It's like yeah. I cleaned the windows and I painted the windows. So, yeah, there's a huge opportunity for all those things that have been sitting in the back of our head. Like one day, one day, one day, I'm going to sort that garage or clean those windows or sit down and have a conversation yeah. and or take the time to really reflect on what am I here for? What do I really want to do? What do I enjoy what am I doing that I don't want to be? There's, mm. there's that time to, to sort of go through all those things that have perhaps been filed in the back of our head and go, ah, oh, okay, now. Now seems like a pretty cool time to, uh, yeah, explore, investigate, learn, whatever it is. That's it. And I know that you know, they used to say that if you've got a whole mass of things and you don't know where to start, put them all on, get a whole bunch of pieces of paper, put a task on each one, put it in a, in a bottle, take the lid off and just take one out at a time. Whatever comes out, you go and do that job. That's the best way to handle it because where do I start? It's way around <laughs> it. But 
my suggestion to the guys would be also put a lock on it so that once you've taken a few things out, put the lock back on again so your wife can't get in and put some more things in. <laughs> that means... Thank God I don't need to worry about that bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, wow. Once you, oh, you know what, though? I mean, even though Ian said about not watching TV, because I don't actually watch a lot of TV, I'm lucky if I probably watch two hours a week. It's good to, yeah, I don't watch a lot. Even though I've got a big plasma, I don't watch a lot at all. Um, but the other day, last week, I had a bit of a uh, meltdown and I decided to pack up all my work stuff, close it off, and I got onto the TV and I watched Mulan, which is um, a Disney cartoon yeah. show. It's just one of the, if you actually watch it and understand what it's about, it's really, truly quite an amazing movie. But it brought me back to where I needed to be. So, yeah, so mm. sometimes I do need to sit down and watch a TV show, mm. Disney show, actually. Nothing too heavy <laughs> because I just find it they're too heavy. Your mind's just mm. getting there. So, yeah, so I just watched a Disney movie. Yeah, you something love to. Yeah, something like, that your mindset, the way you've been thinking, give you a bit of a break yeah. away from that, doing something completely different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm cool with that. Again, you know, as a lot of people don't do TV, and I'm like, you know, that's cool. And I know in the entrepreneurial world, entrepreneurial world, it's like no TV, you know, and it's almost like this sin and you're going to hell if you watch TV. <laughs> you should be learning and growing and expanding all the time. And um, I love that quality time sitting with my, with my daughter or my, um, or my grandkids or, and, mm. and watch the screen. And to me, it doesn't necessarily matter. You know, people are like, I don't watch TV. And I'm like, yeah, but you watch Netflix. You watch the same thing. You miss books. It's, it's only seven minutes at a time, but there's all this, like, I don't watch that. And I'm like, yeah. and it took me a while to go, but you watch screens. It's like, what? Okay, you don't get the ads, so you get more than seven. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I didn't really understand it. So, so yeah, I'm cool. You know, hey, so if yeah. anyone listening is watching some TV and enjoying that, just keep doing that doing it and as Ian says you know if if it brings you down so again I don't watch any of the news or stuff because I just didn't have a mental wreck doing that but if um you know if you've got something that um that lights you up and fills you up yeah. makes you feel good then do it but, and do it yeah. um one of the other things that I wanted to comment and you because you're saying you're working with 17 to 90 year old is that right what is right. 17, so, so it's all, it's all men. Um, yep. So seven, seventeen's our youngest. Our, our oldest uh, is eighty six. Oh, okay. So when I had when I was back being a podiatrist, my youngest client was six weeks, and my oldest one hundred and five, <laughs> which is a pretty cool range. Yeah. But one of the one of the things that that I was happy to spend a lot of time doing, we had a lot of older people come in, and they would have a phone and they'd be able to ring it. Or they'd be able to answer it and then they'd be able to read off the message but they didn't actually know how to how to reply so the amount of time I had my team or myself just spending that moment saying okay do it a couple of times get them to do it a couple of times and it really does only take a moment so my folks I think in their in their late 70s got them got the modern phones taught them how to use it taught my dad how to use the computer. So again, I think there's a massive opportunity for us. And it means having a little patience. Yeah, yeah. And being very, very gentle and nurturing. Mm. But getting, getting our folks or getting the older people or the millennials, whoever it is, that isn't quite up to technology, because I know how freaked out I was around it and how anxious. And I, then I couldn't learn it because I was too freaked mm. out and anxious <laughs> yeah. about getting it wrong. So. So we all have this opportunity to help people who aren't tech savvy yeah. to I've got be a, tech savvy. I've got a mate up the road who sent an apology for not attending the forum last night because he it used up his month's worth of RAM. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless his cotton socks. <laughs> I, I didn't respond, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, what I love about. We've got so many people now getting into the technology side that hadn't used it before. 
the other thing too is I had I was talking to Kylie Hutchinson the other day and um, when we had the birthday party and she said that she'd sp just been spending some time with her grandmother and talking to her about what things she'd been through and the life she's lived and everything else and she was just telling me all this stuff that she'd been talking to her grandmother about and I went has your grandmother put that into a book yeah. uh, no she's you know quite an age now but I said well have you ever thought of filming it you know interview her yourself yeah and there's such an opportunity here. And this is something that, you know, if anybody says that they're lonely and they, they can't, their family's away from them, they can't get physically there to, to, to touch them. Well, this is one way to really get into a very emotional touching way by having the other person on Zoom and interview them, get them to tell you about their, their life story. Because this is how we learn you know, from the older people what they went through. And I know um, Ellie uh, Hurley, a friend of mine, her it was a grandmother who was having her 101st birthday party over in uh, New Zealand. And because she couldn't get there and nobody else could get to where the grandmother was, they had four of them on screen like this on Zoom in different locations. It was her uncle, there was her and another family member. And um, in the conversation, as I said to the, the grandmother, well, look, you know, you're isolated and everything else. Oh, but people can walk past the window and wave and say hello. It was just a blase attitude towards what's going on as though, because she's lived through World War II, she's lived through a whole bunch of other things. And for them, it's, yeah, there's so much we can learn from them and their resilience and their understanding of being able to keep a level head at this time as well. Yeah. Well, I have to, I have to say something. It's jumping out. I know Ian's about to say something. <laughs> my, <laughs> my parents went into aged care recently and it's, it's been really, really difficult. It's a difficult transition, but it happened very suddenly, like we had an hour and a half's notice. And then they went in and then they were in lockdown. So it's been, been a real emotional journey. So my other, my, I'm gonna get emotional now. My daughter went over the other day to drop some stuff off and then called them and they've got balcony windows. So they were out on the balcony window because we're not allowed in. Mm. And then someone, took a photo of Nat. So Nat's standing there looking up at my parents who are a bit hard of hearing and they're yelling <laughs> down at each other from the first floor. And I was just like, yeah, like the blocks that we put in that we can't, we can't mm. connect. But that, yeah, from the window thing, it's just like, I look at that photo and it just, it's like, it just fills my, fills my heart. So. Yeah. 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 What, what you said, Alan, I, I thought of it immediately a business opportunity for anyone who has the ability <laughs> to write, you could advertise and promote that uh, for the, you know, the older, the, the parents who aren't that familiar with uh, technology or because sometimes actually be, be, the ability to ask good questions can bring out a lot of stuff that they probably wouldn't think of proactively themselves. And it would be a time consuming task. But I know my father-in-law wrote his memoirs and unfortunately it was published after he died but it, um, and there's a whole lot of unanswered questions that we've now come up with mm. but um, yeah I, I suggest it's there's someone who's who's a good writer and enthusiastic I, I, it'd be a great present to, to, to mm. uh, yeah and and have this book that could even be passed on down through the generations and built on as, as each each generation adds to it so, story. One of the um, uh, guys that I did a one-on-one -on -one chat with quite some time ago, that's why his name escapes me at the moment, they put an app together where you could then start recording stories and the family then could get access to those. And so that as a story came up in your mind, you just do the recording. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's so much, a you know, wealth of so much knowledge it's lost when we don't get a chance to talk to people. And most people go, oh, but yeah, my not life is not that interesting. And a lot of people coming onto the Campfire Project to have a one-on-one -on -one chat with me and said, oh, look, I don't know what I've got to talk about. I, don't, I have not found one of them to be anything but really interesting to listen to. Yeah. I've enjoyed every one of them because you're getting to know people at a deeper level. You're hearing what they've been through. I've learned from everyone. As I say, I'm a part-time teacher, but I'm a full-time learner. Mm -hmm. And... You know, as you mentioned there before, the from the, the five-year-old through to someone who's in their um, 105, the, you learn from both of them. You have to. Mm. If you've got an open mind and you're not just about yourself, but you want to uh, uh, pick things up, they will always teach you. And in that, when you focus on the other person, there's a, there's a feeling of warmth that's um, probably even greater than sometimes when you're touching somebody. Yeah. 
yeah. because quite often the touch where you meet, you know, family comes over, hug and everything else, it's almost a routine for some people. Yeah. So I've learned a lot from you. I, I, Alan, I saw one of your videos the other day and something just really struck a chord, the role of a parent. We're not there as a carpenter or a sculptor. We're there as a gardener mm. to actually cultivate. And I, it was brilliant. I mean, we're not there to try and you know, turn our kids into what we want them to be. Mm. We're there to let them just bring out encourage them to grow into the best person the way they want it, where they want to go, if you know what I mean. I, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, learned that later in life. I'm sure my three sons would probably tell you that, yeah, he's, he's not much of a gardener. He, you know, <laughs> <laughs> he <got> flowers. <laughs> I, I, just, I started writing a book and it's all got too busy, but I shared with my family I was going to write this book and without looking at it, my son said, Dad, if you write it, it'll turn out to be the most boring book of all time. And, and uh, so <laughs> I actually wrote a chapter and I said, I, I, at a family conference one day, I said, look, I want to read this and I want honest opinions. Tell me whether I should continue or not. And, uh, and the view was, yeah, oh, that, was, that was good. I, I, I'm a poor man's Bill Bryson, if you've ever read Bill <laughs> Bryson. So I try and, so uh, yeah, they said to keep going, but now of course it's been swamped, <laughs> swamped with this. <laughs> so one, of, one of the things, um, I work as a book writing coach at um, retreats, and so one of the things is, again, you can write it, but for some people it is to speak it. So there are apps that you can get where you can just speak it out. And for some people, that conversation goes much faster, much quicker, much easier, and then it's transcribed, it just transcribes it as you speak. Mm. So some of the authors who've come on retreat have written, um, used to be you'd write a book in a week but some people write two or three books in a week now because books tend to get much shorter because we mm. don't have the attention span so one of the things is yeah to look at transcribing and even when you're talking with family members you're talking about capturing the, mm. the history of, of our ancestors forebears and that's again you can have a conversation and you can just you can record it and then get it transcribed and it's a beautiful yeah. way to capture mm. it and I'm in a group the other day and they were talking about they're actually looking for volunteers to go and interview people and that they, they I can't remember exactly what it was called but it was something about the dignity mm. that was for the older people capturing stuff mm. and in, in a way giving them back some some dignity that the, the apps that capture it and transcribe mm. it are brilliant so yes please do your please write your book <laughs> there are some apps like Google you can talk into that and get it transcribed immediately. You've got rev.com where you can send a video or a, an audio and they will transcribe it for you. And uh, that's when you find out how many ums and ahs you put into it. <laughs> <laughs> Another one that I was introduced to, a free one, is Otter. Mm. Um, and that's just, that just hits on the phone. Yeah. It just makes it so much easier to, mm. to capture the information. Yeah, that's it. And a lot of the books, as you said, they're small ones. They're what they call coffee table uh, books. So they're short length because most people don't you know, have the time to read a long book or they just find it daunting. But um, uh, I remember mean, from one of my friends, he would drive from Newcastle to Sydney on regular meetings and he had his mobile set up so that he could just touch it with his finger, click like that. And he'd rec uh, record, he'd talk while he was driving. He wasn't yeah. listening to the radio, he'd talk. He wrote a book just travelling backwards and forwards to Sydney. Yeah. Okay. So there is, so, you know, send it to somebody else. They transcribed it later on. And he also worked on a, a, a one where he knew there were a lot of questions in the marketplace. He just did all the answers to it. Then he gave it to a VA who went and found the questions to match his answers. <laughs> so <laughs> he wrote a book that way. So there's, you know, it comes down to, it always comes back to our imagination. Yeah. I guess the guy who was driving, whether it was any road rage related comments in, in, <laughs> that would be quite interesting person so you know uh, translating it and going i don't think that fits in here <laughs> it's interesting for i know for a lot of people for myself driving is where whenever we have movement it's like mm. the shower people think things when they're in the shower because there's movement going on um, and it's the same with it's the same with driving. So for a lot of people, like I'm ridiculously creative when I'm driving. Mm. If I'm sitting at home in some in a vehicle that's not moving, mm. I've got nothing. 
uh, put me in the car and there's a there's a freedom that comes with that with that yeah. movement so yeah when i hear that i'm like ah of course you write a book when you're uh, when you're driving that makes sense yeah, it's i used to use the uh, shower and that i used to sing in the shower until i got banned by the family <laughs> <laughs> are you that good are you no. <laughs> <laughs> when you come out of the shower and everybody's standing in their doorways arms folded and going <laughs> But don't you, you sound better in the shower, don't you? Oh. Well, you, sorry, you think you sound better in the shower. I know. It's the, <laughs> oh, a real it's crooner the in the shower. <laughs> in the shower. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. Uh, you've got the you know the back brush. You use that as a microphone. Away you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could. Here's, here's your opportunity, Alan. Pick up a pen or something, and we'll we'll listen. <laughs> Just pretend you're in the shower. I can see it now. Everyone goes, time to leave this video. You know that mute button you spoke about? Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. my God. Oh, that's hilarious. The other, the other day, I, oh, so someone was doing a skit. They were doing a skit about enlightened alter ego or something, mm. of the enlightened one or something. And it was just hilarious. So I'd spent the night before with with you, Alan, uh, without you, but with you, <laughs> at your, um, having a magic time for your birthday where you weren't invited. And um, like so much laughter. Mm. And then someone put this skit up. And it's like la laughter is contagious. And once you get going, you, know, you can't help. It's like the video on the train somewhere. There's, a, there's this video where someone laughs and then it just mm. ripples oh, it through. So it's yeah. extraordinary. So this this guy, I was laughing so loud and then I just recorded it and sent it to him because I was like, I've just got to share how much I'm, I'm rocking here with laughter and just sharing that. And then he was, you know, he sent me back. Oh, like that was so good just to hear, to hear that laughter. And again, that's one of the things I think is so important that, you know, it's cool to smile and stuff, but the four of us just, you know, started laughing and, and that, and again, if we give ourselves permission to do that, because mm. often we shove that, you know, that's again a social mm. norm of shoving it, shoving it yeah. down, like we shove a lot of things down. But yeah, laughter is. Um, yeah. Seems to be a lot. Mm. There seems to be a lot of people out there who feel that they they can't be happy because it doesn't fit. It's impolite to everybody else. And I think if a lot of people are doing that, then we're going the wrong way. If we laugh, you know. We feel good when we're doing that. The endorphins are flowing. It's good for our immune system. Yeah. So if we look after our own immune system and we are healthier, then we're less likely to catch the, the virus ourselves and less likely to pass on to other people. So we're looking after their health as well by laughing. We get them yeah. laughing, they're looking after our health as well. I think one of the great things that's, that's happened in the corona environment is the humour around it. And it's and particularly from Australia... And it is hilarious, you know, from people playing cards with toilet rolls or, or whatever. It it's it just it cracks me up, and I, I, I think that's great. Humor, as you said, is 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 good for us physically, mentally. Um, yeah. yeah. I think the media is not helping with this total focus and the negativity yeah. and all that sort of stuff. But the, I think the humor is a. a is it a, is good a, that the Australians can still have it and haven't lost their sense of humor. Yeah. It really is. I just think that if we lost it, then that's it. But like you said, there's so many things. I mean, I did the other day. I've got a Samsung phone. I'm an iPhone person, but I've had to change to Samsung for a while. And I didn't realise all this wonderful stuff you can do. So I did a video with some fancy face and I'm just going like, eh, like, eh. and then I put it up on Facebook. I was just pulling faces and I just thought, you know what, I'm so sick of seeing the downside of everything. Let's mm. show some humour and laughter. Mm. So I just did myself like a clown and put it up on Facebook. Uh, it was great. Got so many comments. <laughs> and I think that's great. And I think the jokes and everything, because they should be, you know, forget about political correctness, because political yeah. correctness locks us down into not doing anything. We, we feel pressured by everything. Laugh at ourselves. You know, I'm teaching people how to read people. I talk about some of my traits and I've got some doozies and I have a lot of fun laughing about those. And people go, you can do that. I go, yeah, and you can do the same with yours. Yeah. And all of a sudden they start to feel more relaxed about what they're doing. And they, you know, they go, well, yeah, I do have flaws and yeah, I can laugh at those flaws. Yeah. So 
having jokes okay. where I you know, throw out the political correctness is what I'm, I'm uh, advocating and just have a really good belly laugh. And if other people can't laugh, then go, okay, instead of us compensating for that, how about we find out why you can't laugh and let's help you get over whatever it is you're not dealing with. Yeah. And then we bring us together that way too. Well, I'm, I'm quite cool to, to laugh and to belly laugh and I'm okay with some of the political correctness because it depends where you are on your, on your journey of, of awakening and being enlightened and things like that. And some people still get, get very, um, you know, get very, very hurt. And again, I, I have a daughter who spent two years studying lots of, lots of issues and then that I wasn't even aware of the depth of what goes on in, in that. So again, each to their own, but I think there's so much that we can laugh about mm. that doesn't, um, yeah, that doesn't feed into that other stuff. Mm. I think that's, um, yeah. I think that's really important. Yeah, I'm with you. I know if I said, you know, throw it out, most people won't throw it out, but they may ease it up a little bit and that's the target, not to be yeah. so serious. Well, yeah, yeah, there's a balance and, and clearly, it, 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 uh, the humour was inappropriate in days gone past and it needed to move. I saw this incredibly funny thing, uh, and if you Google it, it's what's the gender, what, what should the gender be of a computer? And it looks at, you've got a male, have you seen it? Uh, it's Alex? a beauty. It really yeah. is. So the men think it should be women, they give four reasons. The women think it should be male and they give four reasons. And it's hilarious. I thought, oh, is this politically correct? And I, uh, in, in the end, I just like, I, I, I shared it on Facebook because I, I, I I think that's what you're saying, Alan. I mean, mm. you can be. I'm not. We're not talking about being racist or stuff like that. But, but we're just talking about. You, sometimes you, you can take the political correctness too far. Mm. And I, yeah. So, yeah. Mm. It's just knowing where that line is. Mm. is uh, that's it. Is but it's, you know, it's something that's really. Yeah, you, know, you know, is going to push buttons and it's going to hurt people. Well, it's the intent by by the by the intent you'll have when you tell the joke. That's, I think, is the important thing is knowing that, you know, you're just trying to make it lighter and easier for everybody, then go ahead with it. But if it's, um, you now you're having a go at something because there's something you have, because some people come up with jokes when they haven't dealt with their own stuff. They're putting it out because they're having a shot at everyone else. So as long as it's done with a lightheartedness, like some of the um, dad jokes, it wasn't until the blonde in the group started telling blonde jokes, <laughs> which... <laughs> Normally would be yeah. out of place, but it was Kyle who started the blonde jokes, mm -hmm. and um, and but they didn't get too risque at all. They were you know, quite humorous and all this. I used to be blonde, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's it too. I think everyone has their opinion on the political correctness, mm -hmm. and like you said, Alan, as long as you've done it light-hearted, but you can't please everybody either. That's because it. there's going to be, even though you've done it the right way and with good intentions, mm. there's always going to be someone that's going to be offended. Where do you stand with that? Well, as long as you know that you've done it um, correctly mm. and with good intentions and not bad intentions, there's nothing else you can do. That's well, it. You, can, so you can't please everybody all the time. Yeah. But you know that political correctness got to a level where anybody who had an issue with anything, everybody else had to change. And that yeah. caused so much resentment yeah. and other issues. So, as they say, the solution to today's problem becomes the uh, the problem of tomorrow. Yeah, so, I would just add to that. There also should be a willingness to apologise wherever we're inadvertently mm, crossed yeah. the line. Mm. Yeah. So, as you said, the, if the the intention was not to do this, if that happened, we'll mm. apologise. Yeah, yeah. upset yeah. somebody, then have a chat with that person about why it upset them. Understand their point of yeah. view. But in that conversation, they realised that it wasn't intentional, but you understand why it pushed their buttons. But at the same time, they may then go, oh, okay, that wasn't so bad after all. Mm. It, it starts conversations. And these days, the thing we need more than anything else is true and honest conversations. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's so much that we can uh, uh, do for ourselves and do for each other. But again, it's much easier if we've got a bit of humour while we're doing it. Mm. Oh, yeah, definitely, especially those dad jokes. <laughs> the trouble is I can never remember them. I'm too busy laughing at them. And then once I've finished, the next one comes through, I've forgotten the one two or three before, and I'm lucky to remember one at the end of it. I wonder uh, why there's no mum jokes around. That's... <laughs> <laughs> because... Mum jokes were that, was that the mum be, joke? Yeah. <laughs> probably more the case that mum jokes were seen to be just funny, whereas dads are just so bad. Well, 
how we got them all the other day was everyone was like, okay, what's well, a dad joke? So it was like, Google, 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 and I just loved them. I just had the tears streaming down from my eyes. I had a belly ache by the time I'd finished. It was just so funny. And I knew where it was coming from. It was just like, well, for everyone to go and put that together, obviously there was a lot of um, love there. And I knew those jokes were in the same way. It's like having a celebrity roasting. It was lovely. So do your sons like your uh, dad jokes, Ella? Yeah, well, they came up with a few jokes one day and I went, that's a dad joke. And my oldest boy is in his 40s, so turned around and he went, I'm a dad, you know. <laughs> I said, oh, you're qualified now. <laughs> so I just reminded them, remember all those jokes you used to cringe at? You're uh -huh. coming out with similar ones right now. <laughs> and they go, oh, no, I've become my father. <laughs> You know, as a parent, all these things that you think, oh, I'm never going to do that as a parent. Hmm. And then you're doing it and going, and doing, oh, no, no, I don't do it as a parent because oh. I'm <laughs> doing the same thing. And I'm like, oh, there you go. <laughs> that is why I always say that we have grandchildren so that we can um, stir the grandkids up, send them home and pay our kids back to what they put us through when they're growing yeah. up. Yeah. Lots yeah. of fun for it all. Well, guys, it's been lovely having all three of you here, especially with uh, this being Ian and, uh, and uh, Anna's first uh, time on here. And it's always lovely to see you, Heather. Thanks, Alan. We enjoy our conversations. So, again, Ian, Anna and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Heather, thank you very much for being here today. And for everybody else who's uh, been listening in, I hope you get a lot out of this. And, yeah. See if the times can be a lot uh, lighter and have a lot more laughter, especially over this period of time. We'll see you all on the next uh, Campfire Project. Bye ciao, for now. Ciao. Thanks all. Bye. Bye. Bye.